What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom and become the rock star agent in your market. And uh, we have no guest today, so it's me and Greg hanging out, cracking a Starbucks or uh, whatever your beverage <laughs> of choice is. And uh, we're going to kick back and answer some questions. We're going to deal with some objections. We're going to talk about some of the interesting things that we're noticing and doing some coaching and masterminding with agents that are in our world and just whatever else is on our mind today. So we're going to have some fun. Uh, if you are watching live right here on Facebook, uh, we are here live Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can leave a comment or question right below the video here. First of all, let's welcome the junior grandmaster himself in the co-pilot seat where he so belongs. Greg, what are, what's up today? What's up, Matt? Hey, man. Um, so one thing is I've been uh, working on getting um, some personal coaching clients, right, and one-on-one uh, -on -one clients. And today I was I signed up my first real live and human flesh uh, coaching client. Very excited about that. Uh, but we've been doing so much training for free that uh, now it's actually going to be paid coaching. Uh, but uh, this individual who I'm not going to say anything about, um, they revealed to me, which you'll get a kick out of, she was like, well, how do I pay you? I said, well, you send a check. She's like, well, have you ever heard of the cash app? And I'm like, no, I have not heard of this, this cash app. Basically, you download the app and they can either send you a, a, a Visa debit card, which you can access the cash from their account, or you can be transferred into the bank of your choice. But okay. they give you a, an actual card that you can use it on. It's 100% fee to transfer cash. And she started laughing. She's like, well, Greg, you want to hear how I heard about this? And I'm like, okay. okay, I'll bite. And she's like, well... I have been introduced to people that, let's say, are in all cash businesses. And I'm like, oh. Mm, and she's okay. like, no, it's not that kind of all cash businesses. And I'm like, oh. Because <laughs> she, uh, she was telling me about one of her clients that told her about this app. And this gal, okay. um, get ready for this. Her line of work, Matt, is she's into corn fetish. Yes, she will do things with corn that no human being should be doing with corn <laughs> and i was thinking like <laughs> yeah i was thinking pot growers <laughs> yes but okay wow that went that went screaming off in a 90 degree direction that's hilarious yeah okay. i heard about right. that i was just like corn fetishes huh all right See, well, when i when i think of when i think of cash app like i want to be able to press a button and uh, let's say blake lively shows up with literally a bag of cash like that's oh. what i want God, yes. I will, <laughs> that is a blonde I will fight you for. That's right. <laughs> or, or, or the female persuasion, Daniel Craig, shows up, you know, like in a suit <laughs> with a bag of cash. I, I don't see – like there's got to be – like maybe we need to build the app for that. But anyway. Um, okay. So let's – before we get too far down that rabbit hole uh, of, uh, of absolutely no value, <laughs> let's, uh, let's do something that does have some value. So this is, uh, this is an oh, objection that caught my eye because it's something that uh, is evergreen. It isn't related to the time of year as we record this. So this is from the lead gen description objections. George uh, Bittress says, what's everyone's objection handler for? We've decided to refinance and have already begun the process. Congratulations. See you, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if, cause if they're, if they're refinancing, I mean, all joking aside, if they said, Hey, look, we're going to sell cause we want to pull the money out, but you know what, we're, what we decided we've actually, we're, what we're really going to do is just going to refinance and stay here or refinance, take the money and go buy an investment property, you know, go buy a plot of corn. We never know really what these people are going to do. Not. Not true. Clearly not. You can use a cash app. All kinds of wonderful things come from that app. Corn <laughs> fetishes. Um, I actually suggested to her, she's like, what should I do with the client? I said, don't sell her a house. Go see if she wants to buy uh, agricultural land. She took right. a second to catch on to that. Fresh product always coming through. That's right. <laughs> Uh, but the, the funny thing is, is that, um, I totally lost my train of thought. Really, I, I believe just think you. about corn and bio, bio uh, So re, re, going back to, uh, refinancing, if, they, if they've already mm. started that process. Yeah. So with, with, uh, with refinancing, you know, ask them what they plan on doing with the capital. You know, you guys plan on just paying off some expenses. You guys plan on buying another property. You know, what do you guys plan on doing with it? If you're not going to be selling your home, uh, but mm. so just ask questions. That's yeah, what I would just like, them. okay, but like help, help me understand you know, just like kind of why you decided to go that direction to refinancing. Is there something specific you have in mind for the money that it frees up? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly huh. right. Because you never know. They could say, well, yeah, we're thinking about buying a, a, you know, a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex for our son or daughter in college. Mm -hmm. Fucking great. Dude. Go get a 25% referral fee and call it a day unless you live in the college town. Mm -hmm. Bonus to you. You right. can make, make the sale. 
always ask, like we've talked about a thousand times, Matt, and I know I think you'd agree with me, always be in a state of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Always be asking, you know, what the next plans are. Don't just make the assumptions. You're making an assumption about anything, and you're going to make an ass out of both you and me on that one. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's never good because a lot of the times when you make an assumption, you're wrong. And it's your right. own little evil stories that are running up in your head, which are not true. You know, 90% of the time, and you just, you make them true because you tell them so, yourself that the whole, the, you know, every single moment. Maybe they need to pull the money out because their, you know, cousin Bob just died and they need to do funeral arrangements. And then they, may, they have to sell his house. See? Silver lining to everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm still reeling from the corn fetish thing. All right. So this and it goes hand in hand with this one. This is another uh, – a listing objection that I spotted. This is from Anthony Caruso in the same group says, the objection is we are looking to go with an agent that does a lot of business in the area. Not sure if you're not, if you're the right fit. You're not from the area. So Greg, I know you don't necessarily deal with this one a lot in certain areas that you work in because you guys have a reputation for being there. But I, I'm sure you've dealt with this if you step outside of that area or in certain neighborhoods where maybe you guys cover that and a bunch of other neighbors because you guys cover a huge kind of footprint Huge. so you had to have encountered this yeah so what, what's your response to that i immediately ask him what's more important mr johnson uh is it is it having someone that you know that sold a lot of homes in the area most important or selling your home for the highest dollar value you know the reason why i ask is that i may not have been selling homes in your marketplace for the fat you know past 15 billion years but i can tell you one thing is that i've been working with a lot of buyers and i know what they're looking for and i know what they're willing to pay that's why i'm moving into this area so that i can up my price point or i can change my demographics or geographics whatever line you guys want to use there um and so i'm intimately aware of what the buyers can and will pay uh, for a property in this area so again do you want you know you know old sally here to, who's been selling homes since 2001, um, you know, who's done a good job for her clients, you know, but she's a little bit on the older side. Mm -hmm. It may not be so on the techie side where I can bring in a lot of the people that are looking to buy now with, with bags of money. Uh, what's more important, you know, the safe stuff or the more money? Have fun with it. I mean, I mean, what's the chance of them really saying yes to you? It might be pretty low at this time, but I mean, shit, man. You, again, state of curiosity, ask yeah. for the business. What's more important? more money or someone that they try that they know has sold a lot of homes just in that area so mm -hmm. maybe that person's never sold a home outside of that area maybe they don't know what the buyers are looking for or what they're willing to pay because they've only lived in that certain specific geographical little boundaries for x amount of time mm -hmm. i mean ask 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 yeah, I think that comes up too. Like if you're if you're in a, kind of in a um, let's say you're in a team, you're a part of a team, and like that team sells everywhere. So like Jeff Cohn's team runs into this because somehow they have a reputation for selling mostly in West Omaha. Well, guess what? That's where all the, all the new homes are built. Shocker! That's where the land is. Um, so they do sell a lot of homes. I know exactly. It's I'm floored. Uh, but they sell so they sell a lot of homes out there. But they also sell a lot of homes in east and north and south and you know whatever other fifth direction there is that I'm about to make up. Uh, but they sell a lot of homes everywhere and so yeah they have to deal with that objection which is well i don't know that you can really sell my home aren't you guys more of like a west omaha people and of course the answer is no we sell homes all over the place but you're always going to get some variation of that like hey you know are you really the right person to sell my home because of x y and z like you haven't sold a home you know like they want someone who sold their next door neighbors and the neighbors across the street in the last 30 days like with the odds of that being you are pretty slim so you better have a pretty good you know objection handler for it and you know, things like pre-listing packets that show your sales, like you guys have, Greg, with your team, will go a long way towards that. And, uh, and also having – you mentioned something really good. There was a great phrase in there that works really well if you're transitioning from being like a buyer's agent to a seller's agent, which is that I've been working with buyers in this neighborhood. I know exactly what they're looking for, and I'm already working with them. So do you want somebody that has to start from scratch? And that get, they got to go out and find people, or do you want someone who already has the people? And when we when we turn your market loose, your you know your home loose on the market, there's already people lining up to see it because they're in my database and I'm already working with them, all right? So there's there's all kinds of ways to spin it. There there is absolutely a comeback for every variation and shade of that objection. And you oh, just yeah. it just starts with asking a couple of questions, and then you come back at them with you know whatever whatever answer kind of sheds your experience in a good light. Yeah, one of the things I actually did, uh, so we've talked about it a lot, and I did it the other day, because I knew I was going up against um, 
well, five very good agents, but they're all a little bit older female agents. Okay. Um, and these guys had had a, had the property on with a with an old elderly lady. No, she's like literally in her eighties. She doesn't look it. She, but, and she's she actually is a friend of ours, but she wow. she looks right for age. Um, but I mean, they wanted someone that was younger. So mm -hmm. what I did is I went into Facebook, and I'm okay. I'm like, okay, I know my demographics here in Westside Danville. What do what does this make up? So I got my demographics. I put a 25 mile radius on it. You know, kids. You know, income. All these different criteria, and I cranked it down to what might be the right you know avatar to buy the home. And I went up and I told them. I said, and this is a fairly large number. I said, based upon A, B, C, D, and E, when it comes to the, the, this area, I found that there's 6,346, um, you know, people that might be wanting to buy your home. Would that be something of interest for you if I could start marketing to them today? The guy literally stopped. He's like, wow. And and that and I got actually when I called to do the follow up on it, I I talked to one one of the brothers. And I said, hey, man, you know, I enjoy meeting John, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, dude, John was really impressed with you. I mean, he loved the tech stuff. And he loved knowing about the numbers of the potential buyers. And I'm like, oh, really? That, see, we do work heavily in the West Side Danville marketplace. So it was kind of a shoe in. Mm -hmm. Also got a referral in. But having that stat stood me, I was able to stand out from the rest of the crowd of the people who just went in there, just looked at comps, just did the old way that's always been done and really it was it was fun to watch it was fun to watch them totally dead stop in their tracks like huh <laughs> you guys can try that i, I that encourage is, you guys to try that yeah that's awesome yeah I, I like that one a lot that's um it's just it's it still has that especially for most homeowners that don't realize no, they're not keeping track of online marketing they have no idea this stuff is going on they don't even know why when they go to best buy that an ad shows up for best buy the next day in their facebook you know, like uh, in, I know. in their digital display ads, you know, like they're like that. That's like magic. Um, and so like <laughs> some sort of, what kind of sorcery is this? There's an ad. I went to Best Buy yesterday. Look at one thing. And now I'm seeing ads for Best Buy everywhere. It's the CIA. Um, oh. but, anyway, it's funny. but uh, yeah, so to, you know, to most homeowners like that aren't following, you know, developments in digital marketing, they have no idea. So so showing them this is like rocket science. It may not be to us. It may not be a big deal. Maybe it is to you. That's fine. But just the ability to go in and build a Facebook ad and, and kind of scope out those demographics is really powerful. And then to put it together into your listing presentation is really, really cool. So anyway. Mm -hmm. It's the wow okay. factor. So, uh, yeah, it is the wow factor. So we've got a great question here. Marvin Bionaventura says, hey, Greg, do you agree that the amount of leads you generate differs from each type of listing, like expired or distressed listings? That's a really interesting question. Do you agree that the amount of leads you can generate, I'm assuming he means buyer leads, differ from each type of listing like expired and distressed? Well, let, let's focus on the seller lead part of that first because I think he's talking about more in terms of like, you know, are, are there a lot, you know, a lot of expired leads versus distressed listings? All, all that's going to wildly vary and it varies from market to market too. So I don't know that we can actually really give a super definitive answer on that. Yeah, it would. That's a that's a very difficult, very good question. Uh, and I've actually never been asked that question, and I, I don't think you've ever been asked that question either. Um, I think what it really comes down to in every single circumstance is your ability to convert, because there is a large plethora of, of opportunities, no matter which way you turn. It's your ability to identify them. And then we zoom in on the ones that need your help, want your help, and will take your help versus the ones that are just kicking tires or the people who are just wasting your time because they want to be big hat, no cattle. They, you know, they talk a big game, but they actually can't do anything because they want to be driven around in a car or they want to be, you know, doted on or they want to be just made to feel, you know, good and warm and fuzzy. So I would caution you to not go after the quantity. I would go after the quality. If every opportunity that you're out there and you can get one solid person or, or or suspect or or nurture or follow up or anything whatever verbiage you want to put to them someone that wants to do something in now or in the future of buying or selling real estate that's a massive win i mean shit i mean you just go out there and it, i would rather have and matt correct me what give me your opinion i would rather have one solid lead a day versus 10 to 15 lukewarm and a lot of people say well why is that 
well, because I don't, I don't want the bandwidth nor the desire to chase cats in a rainstorm, which are people that are kind of thinking about doing something, or I might do something down the road, which is code for I'm never going to fucking sell my house, but I'm going to keep dragging you on just in case the off chance of alien invasion, I have to sell my house, you know, takes place. But I mean, I, I would rather go at one person, okay. you know, and so quality yeah. versus quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when we're talking about expired versus distressed or, or maybe different types of listing leads, uh, in terms of like the, the quantity of them, like e even across the country, like the number of expireds that show up in a market are going to vary pretty widely. And there's markets like yours, Greg, where there just are no expireds, even though your market is sizable, right? So it's not even mm -hmm. this function of size. It's an issue of how, how extreme the seller's market is. And in, in places that where it's more extreme, like the Bay Area, uh, there's just not a lot of inventory and so the stuff is getting snatched up like things are going for way over list so you know like there's not a lot of expires even fizzbos are selling i mean from, i know from talking to people on jeff Cohn's team that's happening right now to where they're calling up for sale by owners in like the first week and they have like an offer under contract <laughs> they're like yeah we're good we're, we're all set over here thanks for the call though <laughs> So anyway, like that's going to wildly vary. And then, you know, I don't know how many distressed listings there are. I mean, that, I'm sure they're out there, obviously, because sometimes people don't pay their bills, even in a good economy. But we're definitely not in a bad economy right now, at least not in terms of the surfacey things. People right. don't believe we're in a bad economy. And so, uh, yeah, we're not seeing like massive numbers of distress. So, yeah, it's going to that's going to wildly vary. And then on the buyer side, I don't think it necessarily, you know, in terms of how many leads you can leverage a listing into like buyer leads. Um, that is an interesting question, right? So if you have an expired yeah. listing, does it affect the number of buyer leads you can generate off of it? I don't think it varies from expired to a regular listing. I do think it varies if you're talking about a distressed listing because that's a different situation and there may be some damage to the house and you may attract more investors and that may cut off some of the regular people that are willing to get into it because people are looking for like a turnkey move-in mm -hmm. ready home that distress sale may not be that so it may lower the number of people that are interested so that, again that that would vary but i think there's going to be more i think the only time you'd see some of the variety is if you're talking about a house that's in much worse condition i don't think it uh, most people don't have the memory to go oh that was on the market nine months ago i remember that house what was their problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> no people don't remember there's just too many there's too much information there's too many homes to look at yeah there there, there is way too much information too, too many homes to look at but i'll tell you one thing you know those distressed properties are great if you want to flip them out like if you want to do a wholesale deal and for you guys who are kind of looking to me going what the fuck is a wholesale deal it's basically mm -hmm. guys it's you taking a property and you uh, say i'm the real estate agent matt's the homeowner uh, well, I just say, Matt, hey, look, I'll sell, I'll buy your, I'll say the market value for his house is 300 grand for an easy number, right? Mm -hmm. I'll say, great, I'll buy it for 250. And then I will, while I'm under contract, I will then resell it back out to another user, maybe a flipper or end user for maybe I'll tack on 25 grand for my quick little flip right there. So there's 25,000 in equity in the property. I make my quick 25,000 as the flipper. Matt gets out from underneath the house. The investor or the end user gets something with a little bit of meat on the on the bone. So that's, that's right. wholesale. That could be a great opportunity for wholesale. Yeah. Huh? I said and you can go visit that girl with the corn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's another conversation. Oh, hey, no, I had to throw that in there. Well, hey, I'm going to give you plenty of rescue. working capital. You can you can do what you want with it. Yeah, net jets. <laughs> Let's do net jets instead. That sounds way more fun. All right. So. <laughs> All right. This is this is a good question. About this. And, and it leads into a little bit of what we were talking about on the mastermind today with our with our crew. So Craig Moore uh, is from the Lead Gen Scripts uh, group says, do do you all only practice cold calling scripts or do you practice other things like listing presentations and objections and stuff like that? And then he asks, how do you guys practice? Uh, he says, I do verbal repetition and I write the scripts out by hand, which is phenomenal, by the way. That's actually one of the things that Greg Harrelson recommends. Um, mm -hmm. So let, let's go through that a little bit, Greg, in terms of like how, what's the best way for people, especially newer agents, to start getting their feet wet with scripts and get them kind of internalized as quickly as possible. And then how do they work that into their kind of their daily schedule? Go be around people that are better than you and get a script accountability partner as soon as humanly possible. Uh, there are a lot of script um, 
uh, Facebook groups you guys can go join and, and, and do scripting. Uh, I know that my business partner, Chris, who usually sits over there, but it's, you know, the Thanksgiving week. Uh, so he's out with his family. But I mean, he would, I mean, he, he and I would script every single morning. I was around my father my entire life. So literally everything that I say is a script for some way, shape or form. So that's just part of something, part of me being around it. But I mean, go find someone that you can run scripts with. Go have fun with scripts, guys. And the most important things when it comes to scripts, yes, write them out, but personalize them. Do not sound like a robot, please, man. I mean, if, you, if you're getting cut off and you're getting hung up on it, it's because you sound like shit, bro. That's why people are hanging up on you. If you go like, if you just make it casual, relax. Look, in today's day and age, it's not a real stuffy environment anymore. It's very laid back, very easy going for most parts. I mean, if you're in Manhattan, you're probably not going to be wearing board shorts to, a, to, a, to, a, to show clients houses. But I mean, in California, you can easily get away with that. But start running your scripts with someone in your in your, in your sphere of influence and in that circle that you run in uh, because they're going to help you become better. They're going to help you become a better version of who you are, which is actually really, really fun to tell you the truth um, because I know that every single time that when I'm trying to run scripts or doing something along those lines for me and my team, I just keep, I, 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 I work off of whatever is there at that moment that I can build into my script. So here's an example. So I was at the lunch with the Grand Master a couple months ago. He and, he and I were having Subway, real fancy lunch. And uh, we're sitting there just chattering and BSing back and forth. And uh, he said something. He's like, hmm, well, Greg, I wonder if they're secretly thinking about making a move. I'm like, boom, there it is. There's my script. That's what I want to run with. So then I took that and turned that into a calling script, which now we're actually turning into a postcard, to tell you the truth. Um, and we're able to, not only are we, was I able to take something that was just a casual conversation and turn it into a script, is because I had my antennas tuned up for it and I was looking for something. Always be looking for something interesting, maybe a little bit edgy, nothing raunchy or weird, or you know, don't, don't think about corn husks. That's probably not the best corn, the best script to use. But if you could come up with something that, that's as relevant to the people, the time of year. I mean, I was doing calls and God, who who recommended it? One of the one of my one of the viewers on the on the calling show recommended it. He's like, dude, say happy Halloween. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so I just said, hey, happy Halloween. I'm doing some calls today. Dude, people chuckled. They broke the ice. It was fantastic. So with scripting, that's what I would kind of say, guys. Make it casual. Make it conversational. Make it relevant to the, to the area and to the type of people you're talking to. And just enjoy the flow. And A, B, split test all the time. I, if any of you watch me do my calls, you know that I A-B split test and I hardly ever do the same script exactly the way that I do it. It drives Matt batshit crazy when we're trying to teach people stuff, but I do it because that's how I know what works. It's also what I feel like is the right script at the right moment. You know what I mean? Is that kind of making sense for you at all? Matt Johnson, did you leave me again? Uh, the Johnson face did leave me. Okay, let's talk about when and where, you know, you can practice scripts. So here is, you know, a really good one. You know, you can just start looking for the opportunity and start asking questions. If you ask questions about pe people on a consistent basis, you'll understand what makes them tick. Once you make them know how they tick, then you'll be able to really start understanding, you know, where to take that, take that line of questioning. I, you know, a lot of the times for me, I would just be in a conversation with somebody and just bam, just hit you like a ton of bricks. Now, another way you can do it, if you really want to get good at it, go and take this handy dandy thing right here. It's called a smartphone. And uh, sorry, dude, uh, trying to get back. Oh, Matt, Matt got kicked out of the show again. Um, and what I would do is this, I would go videotape myself in a mirror. Don't get weird ideas, people. And I would watch my tonality listen to my tonality, I would watch my body language, I would watch my eyes, where they were going up and down, right or left. Then I went and started and I started studying body language. I started studying, you know, the art of communication. I started studying all these different things so that I could become better and I could communicate with people on the subconscious level. Now, here's a little funny thing about hands, okay? Now, a lot of the times when, you, when you're directing at people, you're doing this, right? You're pointing at them, some sort of version like this. It's a very violent, uh, very visceral way of getting someone's attention. It's going like that. Now, to most of us, 
We don't see anything wrong with that. But when it comes to communication, this is something that you, is, is, is not the greatest of, of ways to talk with someone. So here's what I do all the time when I'm working with folks is I point out a uh, palm up. You know, Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome in. Now, the, there's two reasons why I'm doing this. One, I'm not dictating to them. I'm inviting them. And number two, your subconscious primal brain is seeing that there is nothing in my hand. I am no threat. I am no danger. That's something that when you, can, when you can't see when someone's hands, when they're clenched like this, or when they're in the pockets or the behind, you immediately go into some level of flight, fight or flight scenario. And you're like, okay, is this person gonna harm me? Are they gonna be nice to me? What's gonna happen to me? But when I started doing this open-handed, the reactions from people were instantaneously more, 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 more I guess more relaxed and more inviting for me to be around them. Why do you think, I mean, for on the flip side of that, instead of doing something like this, which is open and inviting, why did Hitler's sign go, go like this? Is very authoritative, very dictative, right? Instead of being welcoming, he was dictating what was to happen in the next few, in the few steps. So when you guys go, uh, God, I gotta, I'll put some links in here. So Amy Cuddy did some stuff on body language. I'll put the other guy that did some things on hand gestures. And it's mm -hmm. absolutely fascinating on what you can do and understand just by small hand gestures, which is really cool. Um, Matt is here, but he's frozen. I'm not quite sure what the Johnson is doing, but I have been officially chatting away like a drunk monkey uh, for quite some time. Um, for you guys, getting deep into the, you know, yeah, getting exactly right, Keely, and getting deep into the subconscious mind is really, really interesting. Now, a lot of us don't really understand the power of that, until we go into understanding the, you know, everything else. So, all right guys, since Matt's having a lot of technical issues today, um, let's see what other kind of questions you guys may have for me so that we can keep working on some of this stuff. Um, it's the Greg Show now. And I know it is the Greg Show, so I need you guys to bring me some questions so we can chitty chat and go back and forth. Now, I'm gonna sit here and just talk about something, God knows what I'm gonna talk about until we can get uh, a couple of questions coming in. but. You know, so this time of year, guys, until I see a question come up, this time of year is a great opportunity. Like right now, that office out there, guys, is a freaking morgue. There's nobody out there because what they're doing is they're mentally, you know, shutting off on the business. Like, oh, I got to travel. I got to do this. I got to do that. You know, they, they aren't taking advantage of the opportunity when it comes to lead generation, goal review, getting prepped for year two. Well, next year, this is one of my goal books that I carry around. This is something that I review and I update on a consistent basis. And the reason why is that if I know exactly where I want to go in 2018 and beyond, I can start putting the pieces into, in, into, into the right order now. So as life changes, Matt and I are going to be building a, uh, a, a statewide and then nationwide real estate team. Okay, and if you guys want to start, you know, talk about joining it and kind of what goes into that, we got a ton of cool shit that goes into that, guys, if you want to join it. No, it doesn't cost anything to join, okay? Um, it's not like the bone, the, the skull and bones club. There's no initiation fee <laughs> or rit ritual. <laughs> uh, we just want to help you guys sell more real estate around the area. Um, so we're going to start building that, but we, I want to put 2,500 plus people in the next 18 months into that team. You know what? I want to be, we just got our predictive analytics leads that I've been telling you guys about. Guys, our predictability on these things are through the freaking roof. I mean, stupid good. I mean, beyond stupid good. And then we get a, you know, anyways, let me know if you guys want to know about the predictive leads and stuff like that. There's a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipe and it's like a money back guarantee. You're not going to lose any money on this thing whatsoever. And so I'm, I'm trying to put things into my life so that I know where I'm going to land in 12, 18, 24, 36, 40 months down the road. So what have you guys put in to uh, your next steps for your goals, for your plans for 2018? Have you guys done anything when it comes to that? Um, I got a couple of questions coming through here. What is this thing? Well, I have another question for you, Greg. Um, if there is no motivation for a homeowner to sell or move, how do you turn that around? Marvin, you need, one of the things that I've been taught in this business is that you need to work with people, someone that has a want, need, and a desire to make a move or to buy a piece of property. You cannot push a seller out of a home. You can draw them out. If you can show them that the value of selling and, and moving forward with life is better than staying where they currently are, 
but you can't push them out. So you need to understand what their core reasons and values are for making that move and considering the sale. Is it getting a job transfer, downsizing, you know, do they want to upsize? Are they having a kid? Are the kids going to college? Did they lose a job? Did they get a job? Whatever it may be, understand that reason and then coming up with us with a be a resource for them so that they can have a massive opportunity to better their own lives. You, there's a lot of people out there. You don't need to force everybody to work with you right when you need it to. Right to go. All right, Paul, coming through strong on that one. <laughs> What is the process for selling, uh, for setting 2018 goals? Caitlin, the thing that I would probably recommend for setting 2018 goals, sit down with a yellow pad, sit down with something, um, you know, that you can write and have a literal brain dump. Five, 10 minutes, no filter if added on, write down everything that you want in 2018, write down everything you don't want in 2018. Guys, clarity will come extremely quickly. Um, when it comes to these types of writings, I mean, I wrote down, I filled up two pages, single line, yellow pages, um, in five minutes of everything I wanted in the near future. And I didn't put any filter on it. And it was incredibly amazing to watch what I could, what I, what I truly wanted come out onto paper. Now, why is it important to writing out on paper? Because there is a transformation that takes place when it goes from your mind to a written word, it becomes real, authentic. It becomes tangible at this moment. Once something becomes tangible, it becomes real. Therefore, you put more weight behind it. Also, guys, up here in your brain, you are one big clusterfuck of a mess. Let's put it, let's put it real bluntly, guys. It's a dangerous place with you know that six inches between your ears, because it, you, everything can get mumbled up and jumbled up. Write it down. Become clear. Clarity is the key to achieving your goals in 2018. Um, let's see, predictive analytics leads info. Austin, I would need you to uh, private message me. Anybody who wants information on this stuff, guys, private message me, go find me Greg McDaniel, shoot me a, a message about it and you and I can have a, ch a chat about something, a, a, kind of about what we're doing and when it might be available everywhere else. And we can go from there. Um, let's see here, Paul, what are you saying here? I'm going to if the sellers, uh, the seller has no motivation. To, okay, I've already read that one. Sorry, guys. All right, let's bring this up here. Let's see if I can pick up a couple other questions. Matt is still trying to get in, desperately trying to get in as fast as he possibly can. Um, let's see here, guys. Sorry about this. We're having tech difficulties, and Matt may or may not be uh, be staying up here. Uh, he may be going down to San Diego. Let's talk about a couple of things here. Let's answer some questions. I actually am always coming to these types of things with some sort of, come here. See, I'm always rolling around with some sort of education. I'm definitely not prepared for doing something. So let's go for, let's go for goals. Since we're talking about goals, yes, don't laugh at me. Don't judge me. But this is my, this is how I kind of go through things when it comes to doing goals and plans. So number one, guys, your big, your big foundation needs to be your big why. Why are you doing, why are you going after, why are you trying to achieve X, Y, and Z goal? Now, if, if you guys don't have a big why, we got a big problem because your big why is going to be the thing that's going to motivate you and push you when times get rough. So for instance, my big why for me, what I review on a consistent basis, guys, is the fact of the matter is that I will never be broke again ever in my life. I don't give a flying fuck what I have to do to never be broke again because I've been broke. I went down to $35. I had went through bankruptcy. I went through foreclosure. I went through embarrassment. I went through not being able to do or have anything that I wanted in life because of the fact that I didn't know my clear, my, I wasn't clear on my big why before. So my number one, never being broke. Now my beliefs, what do I truly believe? That's number two guys, beliefs. Now my beliefs are this, I, I know for a fact without a shadow of a doubt, when I invest in myself and I go and I further my education, when I work to be my best, I know that I can overcome anything out there. Yes, I have a high school degree and that's it, okay? Now actually I have a PhD, public, High school diploma, ha <laughs> ha, brunch. Yeah, I know, corny. Um, but that, that is the actual actual fact that everything else is self-taught. I, I didn't, there's no formal education, so, but I know that because of that, my beliefs will take me through that. Now, next one up, guys, habits. 
Habits is a big one. What are you doing on a consistent basis to build habits? Habits are what's going to dictate your future. Whatever you're doing today, you're going to get the results about 60, 90 days down the road minimum, or you're going to get it a couple of years down the road. It could be health. It could be education. It could be whatever it's going to be. But I'll tell you, my habits have radically transformed because I spend, you know, I spend time every single day becoming better with who I am. Could because I do my calls every day. Even when I don't want to do my calls, I'm doing my damn calls. I'm doing my follow-ups. I'm doing these things that people put off. And these people I talk to on a consistent basis, they have zero habit built in, except for not having a habit, which is a fucked up scenario to be in in the first place because you never you can't get what you want because you don't you don't have anything to get because there's nothing there. <laughs> Go figure, right? Um, now here comes the next one. The next one is S T P strategies, tactics process stp right here strategies tactics and process so strategy you know what to do what are you going to do to get you to that next level all right tactics how are you going to do it what is, and how are you going to do what that strategy that you know you need to do and then the last is process what to do over time what are you going to do day in, day out? One of the things that I promise to do, guys, is stop drinking during the week. I have felt fantastic since I stopped doing it because my habit used to be to drink on a, I mean, drink every day because I had a belief that I, I needed to do it. And my big why was that I just didn't give a fuck. So I changed that. I flipped it on its head. And now my habit is to not drink Monday through Thursday. I feel better than I felt in a long period of time because my beliefs are saying that that's true. Now, goals, guys, health, money, you know, personal goals, whatever it is, this is at the very top of the pyramid. Now, why is why is it at the top of the pyramid instead of the bottom of the period? Big pyramid, not period. <laughs> bottom of the pyramid um, is because, you guys, your goals can be supported, but they have to be supported by a very specific mindset and belief system. You have to have your why as your foundation. Then you have to have your beliefs that you can achieve it, your habits to you know move towards it. Then you have your strategy, your tactics, and your process to get uh, your goals, which are going to be at the pinnacle. This has been something that's been on my mind for a long period of time, and it's been something that has been incredibly powerful to help me move through the hard times. So there's a there's a there's a there's a strategy or a way of thinking that is that is interesting. There's, there's four quadrants to this. So everybody has potential. All right. It could be big. It could be small. But every one of us has potential to do what we want to do in life. But the actions that you take are going to then give you a result. Those results are then going to reinforce your beliefs on your potential. So let's say you have the potential to do 50 deals a year, right? But then you don't really do anything on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Therefore, your results are much lower than what they should or could have been. Therefore, they reinforce to the fact of the belief systems of your actual potential. So if you didn't believe that you can actually achieve this, guys, your actions are going to give you results, where your results are going to reinforce your belief in your potential. This can go back and forth either way. It can either prove to the fact that you can achieve everything and anything that you want in this year, or it will prove to the fact that you can't achieve and that you should never have tried because you, you can't or will not get what you want to go after. Now, I, there are so many people. There are so many people that unfortunately, guys and gals that are watching me live or doing this on a recorded vision, they take the path of believing they can't achieve it. And that therein is the biggest devastation, not only for that person, but it's also for all the rest of us. Look, a lot of us get very, we're very competitive in regards to getting deals or achieving certain achievements or watching someone lose when you win. When in reality, if they don't go for what you what they want, or if you don't go for what you truly want, then that's actually hurting all of us as a whole. The guys, the graveyard is the is the richest place on earth earth because that's where people are that will never have invented that 
thing. They will never have written that book. They will never have sang that song. They will never have, made, have reached out and said, hey, that's a hot chick or that hot dude walked over and got over their fear and said, hi, who knows what kind of children they could have produced that would have impacted the rest of the world's population for generations and centuries to come. What if you took action today on what you truly want, but it scares the living piss out of you to do it? then I'm gonna say, please do it. Because your real estate, your family, your friends, your coworkers all need you to step out of your comfort zone. Because if you don't, then we are all gonna be doomed to have something lesser than what we should have had because you didn't step up to the plate. Now, I remind myself about this on a consistent basis that, you know, when I don't take action, when I don't do something that I know I should do, or I do something I know I shouldn't do, there's going to be a consequence and a ramification for every decision made. Now, you guys have, literally, you have the ability to create your own future. 2018 can be your best, mediocre, or your worst year. What's it going to be for you? What could it be for you? And why wouldn't you go for it? Why wouldn't you stand up and say, today's my year. This is going to be my day. This is how I'm going to be seen in 2018. Who cares if you showed up like a fucking chump in 2017? It's fine. You're a chump in 2017. Now it's time to be a winner. Now it's time to stake your claim. Now it's time to, to walk with pride into that office. Hold your head high. If you've never done a deal, I don't give a fuck about you not doing a deal. Because today is the, ne the first day of the rest of your life when it comes to production and mental mindset. And when you see it like that and you really hold on to that theory and that, and that way and that belief to the fact that this is yours, but you have to decide. Now, I was watching a Will Smith video. And a lot of you guys may or may not know this about Will, but he's an incredibly intelligent man with a work ethic that scares the shit out of me. That man works hard, right? But he was watching a video was a number of years ago. I was sitting right here in this chair. And I was, it was, whew, let's see, it was, this is 17. So it was probably 12, 2012, 2011, somewhere in there. Still battling some mental shit, you know, having a rough day. I, was, I used to get into the office pretty early. And I would listen to motivational video, motivational video, motivational video. And I'd listened to this video multiple times. And it was all about making a decision. Right. And Will is sitting there in, 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 in this interview and he says this, he says, you just have to decide. You just have to make a choice and then move forward because the universe will get out of your way once you make a decision. And so uh, for whatever reason, that hit me that day. And I was like, OK, I'm going to make a decision. I, I say, and this is something totally silly, guys. I say, you know what? I'm going to be on live television. Zero connections to live television at that moment, okay? And so it was about a week later um, when I got an email. It was a Sunday afternoon, and I was sitting with the, my ex. She and I uh, were at the house cooking and kind of just having a cocktail, just chilling. It was a lazy Sunday, right? And uh, I, I looked down at my phone, and I see that there was an email from a guy who has a local large TV presence for a local news channel here. And I'm like, uh, babe? I think I was just invited to come on live TV. Sure enough, I hit up Rob um, and he's like, hey man, I want you to come on and do a live segment with me. It's gonna be seven minutes. Uh, we'll talk about real estate. I'm like, holy shit. And guys, I hadn't talked to him in three or more years at that point, zero contact. Reached out to me randomly because I made a choice about doing something in my life. Now, I went on live air. And I got to tell you, it was the scariest fucking seven minutes of my entire life. I almost fell off the stool I was sitting on because I blacked out. <laughs> they said, and welcome to the show, Greg McDaniel. <laughs> Completely black. <laughs> I was holding on to the bottom of the stool, right? Just like swaying, trying not to you know, fall off. And I saw the video, my ex recorded it. And I actually, actually it looked like I actually knew what I was doing. Fooled them, right? But then I started thinking. If I could get on TV, right? If I could, if I could, if I could do something that I had zero control over, right? What else can I do? What other opportunities are out there that if I set my intentions towards it, that I could start making things happen? Guys, I own both of my dream cars. I have my Mercedes S550. I have my Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. Guys, I own them at the exact same time. I never thought I'd own them at the exact same time. 
but I'm doing that right now. I live in a home that feels like a home. You know, I, I, I have written down very specific things that I want to put into my life. And now we're, Matt and I are really going to go for the go for the gold and shoot for the stars and growing this team, you know, nationwide and statewide uh, and help just hunt thousands of agents live the lifestyle of their of their dreams. But I'm shooting for because I know exactly what I want. I ultimately and the reason why I say this out loud is because, you know what, you got, I got to be accountable, right? I want to have upwards of 25,000 real estate agents on my team within the next 72 months. I completely believe it's 100% available and, 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 I, and I can do it. It's going to take a lot of work. Do I know how I'm going to achieve it? Fuck no, I don't. Do I know I can? Absolutely. Why do I, why do I think I can do it? Because one of, my, one of my greatest quotes I've ever heard was, if one man can do it, another can do it. It's such a simple, simple, simple phrase. But when people look at their future and they say, oh, I can never achieve that. Or, I could never be that guy or gal. Why not? Why can't you be that person? Why can't you be better than them? They did it. What the fuck is your excuse for not achieving it? Time is going to go by, guys. You're, you know, why not put time into your goals? Why not strive for excellence? Why not go be the best version of you? You know what you shouldn't be doing. You know exactly what you shouldn't be, shouldn't be spending your time on, but yet we still indulge ourselves from time to time because we have that guilty urge to do whatever that is. Smoking, drinking, maybe smoke a little reefer every once in a while. Ooh, ganja. But you know what? You gotta, you gotta figure out what you, wanna go, what you wanna do and what you don't wanna do, all right? And I want you guys to start believing in what you can, what can achieve. So start with something small, do something small, maybe put it out there that you can achieve, maybe get one good lead before Thanksgiving. doesn't matter where it comes from. It could be anything that you desire to, to do. Maybe start with, you know, bringing into your, into your life, into the universe. Maybe it could be a stick of gum, an extra five bucks, a great connection with someone at, at Starbucks or Pete's or somewhere like that. Maybe it's venturing off and starting your own podcast taking that next step towards whatever you're going to do. Guys, I, I get I get revved up about this. Dave, what'd you say? I'm stopping my Tobin Robbins podcast because you're live. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you're the Adika. All right, Stefan, way to go, player. You know it, man. It's the king. Central Coast king. Anyways, I digress. So what I was saying, guys, is this. If you can put your energy towards whatever you want right now, 2018 is really going to be a beautiful year for you. And I, and I want you guys to achieve your goals. I want you guys to stay up with me and stay in communication with me. I want you guys to reach out to me. What, what can I do to help you? What can I do to further your dreams, your goals for this year, next year, the year beyond? What connection can I give to you? It's, there's an amazing thing that takes place when people start working the sphere of influence and the people around them. I mean, you know, people can always achieve more together, but yet we're so afraid to voice our goals. We're afraid to voice our fears because we think we're the only ones fighting them. Guys, every person you come in contact with is fighting a battle you know nothing about. And you're doing the same thing. But what if you, like, I have come out here today and I've said some, you know, hey, I want to put 25,000 people on my team and, uh, you know, 72 months or less. You know what? I want to do X amount of deals with my team. I want to change X amount of lives. Why do I say this? Because I need your help to do it. You guys need help from other people to do it as well. So challenge you. Go, go find someone and tell them what you want. Even if it's completely fucking ludicrous. Tell them what you want. And then allow them to touch base with you so that they, they can help you move through it. And guys, they may ha might have the right connection for you to get to that next level. Matt and I, on the backside of all of our podcasts, when we have guests, we sit and we ask people, what can we do to help you? How can we help your business grow? Who can we introduce you to? People are so blown away by that. And when it, they don't, because our society doesn't feed that type of mindset. We always say, mine, I'm going to keep this for me. I'm not going to share it. But if you go out and you share everything you have, people will give you what you can never imagine. Like uh, my boy, Andrew Graham, uh, the founder of Live Leap. Dude, all he and I do, we just banter back and forth. We just throw connections to each other back and forth, you know, trying to better each other's businesses. And in return, uh, I've been able to put him in co contact with some really cool people. And he's been able to put me in contact with just epic people that I had would have no reason or no ability to reach. But one connection 
And it was like, oh, yeah, man, I'll have a conversation with you. Hank Avix is another great example of that. Hank open, has opened up the door for me several times to people that I would never have been able to get to. I mean, guys who make seven figures a month. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a million dollars, guys, just so you know. You know, a month. And he's at one phone call and we were able to get him on our show. So start reaching out. Start being vulnerable. Start allowing your underbelly to show start showing that softer side of you we all have battle you know bulletproof skin 90 percent of the time because that's what that's what we typically show the world but show people vulnerability show people love show people that you know what just because you got this hard crusty exterior doesn't mean that that's truly who you are you will be blown away by the relationships that will be built and by the friendships that will form from you being real and authentic and true. Um, John, how are you, my friend? Yes, Mark Hank is the bomb. I want to know more ways to market a listing from other than social media, open houses, putting a sign in the front yard. What else? Oh, my gosh. Well, I would do door knocking. I would do calls. Um, those would be two of my things that I would do right there. I mean, there's a thousand things. Let's see here. Let's see here. What else can we do here? We can doors calls. You can do events. You can do mailers. Uh, you can pop by. You can work your sphere of influence. You can go to wordofmouth.org. I think it's wordofmouth.org. Let me see here. Word of mouth. .org. Sorry for all you podcast listeners. You hear me thumping away. Yeah, here it is, wordofmouth.org. Here is, I'm going to put this in the chat box for you guys right here. This is the way to stay, you know, top of mind uh, in little little scripts, little techniques you can do so that people will be thinking about you on a more, on a more consistent basis. Uh, so then, of course, we talked about social media. Uh, Jenny, I'm glad you like it. Good. Uh, we'll talk about videos, blogs, either written or video. Um, you can do that there. You can sponsor local kids and bike teams, email drips, uh, editorial print ads, YouTube videos, YouTube ads. Um, let's see here. Podcasting. You can use Coop out. You can go out and build stuff and then you can ask for the referrals. I and mean, we can go down that rabbit hole for a long, long, long period of time. Um, but I have literally been chattering away like a drunk monkey for almost 30 plus minutes at this point. Um, so as you, as we're going to bring this into a conclusion for the day, the one thing that I, I implore you guys to go do is I'm asking you guys to please go out, make one person's day better. If you can, if you can say a kind word to somebody and you know that they need it and then ask how you can help them. The ramifications of that act of kindness will be astronomical. You might not see them all, but you'll never know what you did for that other person. You know, I've told this story before, and I might tear up when I tell the story now because it is a story that grabs me every single time I tell it. I have a friend. Her name is Angela. She lives in San Francisco, and she was taking one of the trolleys downtown to meet up with a friend for lunch. Now, she was sitting next to this gal on the trolley, and uh, she just had this gut urge to start having a conversation with her. And so as Angela was talking to her, you know, they, they just really, they really had a good time talking. Now, Angela got to where she was going to get off, and she said, you know what? My friend can wait another day. Can I take you to lunch? And this gal was so blown away that she's, well, well, are you sure? And Angela said, absolutely. Come on, I'll take you to lunch right now. Let's go. And so they go and they had spent like two hours <laughs> at lunch together. They stay in contact. And the gal contacts Angela a couple months later. And she says, Angela, uh, you don't know this. But the day that I was on that trolley, she was on the way to kill herself. And because of those kind words, she saved a life. What could you guys do to impact someone, maybe not to that level, but to a level where they can look back and say, because of my conversation with so-and-so, my life is better. Now, Angela had no way she knew that she was going to save a life that day. But none of us know that. We never know what our impact is going to be on the world, on society, around our friends, around our family. We have a $20 challenge. Uh, Hank and I, you know, we, a lot of us are, are playing and the $20 challenge is keep an extra 20 bucks in your pocket, right? And whenever you see someone 
uh, that is like just they do that little small little thing that just makes your day a little bit brighter. Or maybe they just say that one little thing or they do something. You go and you give them 20 bucks. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but have you ever been given 20 bucks for no reason? Pretty sure your day is going to be pretty awesome from that moment forward. And people around you are going to know how much more positive you're going to be because of that simple act of kindness, that gesture of goodwill. I was doing the $20 challenge, and I'm not saying this next story to brag. It's just the fact of the fucking matter. I didn't have any $20 on me. I saw this guy. Now, he was a homeless gentleman, and he was outside of Safeway, which is our, our supermarket here in Northern Cal. And he had a dog with him. And I love dogs. I love cats. I like animals, right? Dude, this dog was so cold. You could see the poor thing shivering just sitting there, right? And so I look at my wallet. I'm like, oh, perfect chance to do the $20 challenge, right? Perfect way to pay it forward to someone. All I had was hundreds. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, well, something in my gut was telling me to go do this. So I was walked up to the guy. And I said, hey, man, I got to give this to you. This is for you. He looked down. His eyes just went bigger than saucers. You know, saucers just started welling up with tears. He says, thank you so much. How, you know, I'm going to go buy some food for her right now. He didn't even think about himself. He only thought about his dog. I mean, I, I walked away from that just absolutely blown away. And I've never looked back. I've never thought, wow, what a waste of a hundred bucks. I only thought, wow, what a great way. He asked me what I could do, what he could do to, to re repay me. I said, go be kind to someone else. And uh, let's wrap this up here, guys. But this 2018 is going to be a great year for a lot of us. It's going to be a shitty year for some of us. It's going to be a mediocre year for a good number of you. But that doesn't have to be the reality. You can change your course at any time. I believe it wholeheartedly because I believe and I love you guys. If you guys have any questions about this or anything else that I can help with and, 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 and to maybe uh, point you in the right direction or see if there's anything that I can do uh, to help you guys boost your next year in your business, guys, go ahead and just you know hit me up. Follow me um here if it's the first time you guys are watching this um and tell a friend man tell a friend tell someone about this free source of education guys we, we've been doing this for almost three years we've put out hundreds of videos and they're all based around you becoming better at your trade craft so you can live the life of freedom that you so deserve all right guys we went down a, a very interesting path. You guys who have been sticking with me and watching this, thank you more than you can ever imagine. As you guys know, Matt and I do this because we love you. Uh, if you guys want some coaching uh, information uh, to do coaching one-on-one -on -one with me, it is $1,000 a month. It's $9.97 a month or $9.96. It's a dollar difference. Who cares? It's $9.96 a month. Uh, if you guys are interested, go to bookmcdaniel.com. Again, go to bookmcdaniel.com. Um, and you guys can see, we can set up a time for 30 minutes to see if I were a right fit for each other. If we will like it, we'll set up a 60 minute conversation to go deeper on it. And then we'll, we'll make a decision there, guys. But anyways, as always, I am here because I love it. It's a labor of love. I think you guys all are incredible. Each one of you is unique, and that's why I love spending time with you. And as until next time, guys, peace out, ninjas. We're gone.